Good morning and welcome to the Petiti Pro Garden Show. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. So much going on right now at the Stark County Fair. It's just absolutely crazy, but we're having a great weekend and we have a lot to cover to let you know actually not just what's going on at the fair, but also um, a lot of the issues that many of you are having in your garden. So just stay with me. We're going to um, open up in a word of prayer, ask the Lord's blessing over our show, and then we will get right into answering your questions. Heavenly Father, we just come before you and we thank you for your goodness and your grace and your mercy, Father. Oh, Lord, you bless us so much, and we just thank you for your goodness. Father, use our show to bless someone's life and to bring glory to your name. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. So um, the first question that we had um, was about figs. And, you know, we don't have a lot of questions about figs because not a lot of you grow figs um, in our area, but we have seen quite an increase in many of you growing figs. So um, we wanted to, of course, answer those questions. And we do have fig trees normally. We have sold out this year, actually. But normally we do have those fig trees ready to go for you. And uh, we, um, like I said, have sold out this year. But um, always in the spring have had those for the last couple years. And um, many of you are taking advantage of that and really jumping on and getting to um, – start growing your own figs. So um, the question, we've had actually a couple different questions, so we're going to answer all of them, um, is why isn't my fig tree, it's old, and why isn't it producing a lot of figs? And that could be a couple reasons. So we're going to start with figs are known to be hardy in our area. Now they need some protection, and many people go about this protection in different ways. Now, some people just plant them. If you have a Chicago hardy fig, you can plant it outside like you would any other fruit tree. Just make sure that you mulch it good and it will live unless we have a terribly hard winter. The next way is old timers um, in Europe and here, several of them, um, and several of them still do this. Um, they actually have their fig trees. Um, they have them in large containers. In the winter or as late fall is coming on, they dig a trench and they literally lay their fig tree because they are a deciduous tree, so they've lost their leaves. They lay them down in this trench, cover them up, with some type of a compost or even straw, um, you know, different types of, you know, debris like that to protect it for the winter. Then others will actually plant their tree and they'll build um, an igloo around their fig tree in the winter. Um, we have one customer that does it with bales of straw and he takes straw, puts it all the way around the tree and then builds it up, um, alternating and then he hooks it all together um, so that it doesn't blow over in the winds of the winter and has had pretty good luck with that. We have a couple customers that do that. And then there's the customers that doesn't trust it to be hardy enough in Ohio um, because of our winters and they don't want to take that chance on losing it. So they put it in a container, you up it as the tree grows, and you bring it inside for the winter. Um, it can handle, again, very cool temperatures. Um, and I find that they do best if they're getting some adequate light, but you could put it in the garage, um, in the basement, but it does need some light. That's why I'm very surprised that the ones that do sort of well that are buried um, because they get no light hardly at all, um, but they do semi well. So what, now that we've talked about how you can protect your fig tree, we're going to talk about why people aren't getting a lot of figs. And it's going to determine, I believe, over because of experience and talking with many, many people that has lots of um, difference of opinions on how their fig tree is producing, on which way you're going to get the most figs. So just leaving your tree outside planted like you would a regular fruit tree, just giving it a little extra mulch in the winter, you're going to have the least amount of figs normally. Burying and the igloo is about the same. 
and then, of course, bringing inside to your garage or your basement um, where it's, you know, gets very cool into the 30s um, is going to be next. The way you're going to have the most figs is if you bring your fig tree in to um, a inside your house, preferably leaving it in an area where it will get quite cool into the 40s lose all of its leaves, and then gradually bring it into a warmer area. So how we do ours at the greenhouse, and we have lots of figs. I We've probably harvested 50 figs from our one uh, tree. It's in about a seven-gallon pot right now, and it is due – because we have it outside right now, it is due to be upped into a bigger pot before when we bring it in this fall. That's how we'll do it. But – when you have it in that container, we bring it in. It's going to be in the greenhouse. Of course, days it's sunny. It's going to get, you know, very warm in there. Um, then we move it to the back part of the greenhouse. It has no heat, but will get some warmth during the day, but get very cool at night. Um, and we'll leave it there until about February. Mid-February, we'll bring it into a section of the greenhouse, um, again, that gets very warm during the day, but it's in um, a very far corner of a slightly heated greenhouse where it will never get below 40 degrees at night. And then we leave it there until we're ready to take it outside in the springtime. And we usually will do that after the threat of frost, just because Um, Our tree will be a little advanced, and if the tree does get hit with a frost after it has started to produce tiny little fruit, it's going to be like a peach tree. Those buds will fall off, and then you won't get the harvest. So that is how you're going to get the most. That's the reason also that many times the trees that you plant outside doesn't produce as well because of those late frost. And a lot of times if um, you dig it up or you you know have buried it during the winter and you dig it up early in the spring it starts to leaf out and we have a hard frost it will nip those new leaves also and slow your tree up producing leaf tissue then takes energy from the tree being able to produce a fruit so all of those factors are going to determine how much fruit you get So that is the first question about why you don't get a lot of fruit. The next question is um, on the figs, when do you know that they're ripe? Some figs stay on the greenish color. Some of them turn a little bit of a tan and then some even darker, sort of a brownish purple color. It's really all about the feel of the fig. So it's going to be touch. Um, And because of that color difference, some of them are ripe when they're green and others are um, not ripe until they turn the colors. And, but it's all about the feel. So if it is soft to touch, um, like a grape, it's getting very, very close. And if it gets a little bit softer, like a semi-ripe banana, that's usually when it's good to pick. Um, I like to be able to push and know if I pushed hard, I could squeeze it, you know, like right out. Um, So those are the ways that you're going to know um, that your fig is um, ready to to go. Um, I know we've just talked like eight minutes about figs, it seems like. Um, But there is a lot. It's it's a very, it's it's a tough plant. Um, But if you, once you get on a roll, and if you've never had a fresh fig, you don't know what you're missing. It is a godly fruit. It is, it is just amazing. And so if you have a fig tree, you have more questions, please feel free to get a hold of us. Or if you have any other question that you would like to have answered um, about your uh, landscape, about your fruit trees, um, your vegetable garden, please um, make sure that you get to us um, some way or another, you can either call us at 330-455-5997. You can email me at cindypetiti at gmail.com. That's C-I-N-D-Y-P-E-T-I-T-T-I at gmail.com. And I will be glad to answer your questions via email. Um, And also, please stop in at the store. Bring me your questions. And that's going to be one of the 
quickest ways for you to get your answer. Um, Sarah or I um, or one of our other um, team members that uh, will be there, hopefully they can answer your question. And if not, um, we we rely on technology now. So if you have a question, um, let's say you have something on a leaf and you don't know what it is, um, you bring it into the store and let's say that, you know, Michael's there and he just can't figure this one out. Um, he can take a photo of it, send it to me wherever I'm at. And um, I've been at the fair a lot this week. So this has happened. And that's why it's fresh on my mind. He sends me the photo and I can identify the um, issue for him, tell him um, what to recommend, and then he can relay um, the answer on to you. Um, And if not, um, if you can't make it into the store, emailing me those pictures um, and then uh, let us know when you're coming into the store, I can um, make sure that the person at the store knows what to recommend for you, just in case they can't. Um, Unfortunately, I'm the old timer, and I've been in the industry um, longer than some of them have been alive. Actually, most of them have been alive. So um, I um, have had just a bit more experience than them. They're all wonderful, wonderful people. And I have to put a shout out to all of the my team members at the store. They have been riling around me this week, helping me out, um, covering store hours. Um, like I had said last week, um, we do have um, restricted hours this week during the fair because I am at the fairground so much. Um, so we are open um well, today, um, till four o'clock, which is a normal hour, but we have been open all week long, um, only till five, like normally we're open till six. We are closed um, on Sunday still, and we are going to be closed Monday, Labor Day, um, so that um, everyone um, can be with their friends and family. I just can't believe it's September already. I'm like, this is just the year is flying by September. I, I, I'm just overwhelmed. But um, again, a shout out to all of them and to all of um, our listeners, all of you. Um, I have one special listener that I want to say a shout out to. He is, um, I think, the furthest away that anyone has actually listened to our show on a regular basis. And that's Andy Zabo, um, one of my best friends, um, retired. Um, from the Canton Repository and uh, moved to Florida and still um, he listens to our show every Saturday morning. So thank you, Andy, for um, being a loyal listener um, to the uh, Petiti Pro Garden show. Thank you so much. But um, let me answer a couple more questions and then we're going to let you know of everything um, that we have going on at the fair. And it looks like it's time for us to take our um, mid-show break to hear from our sponsors. And we will do that. And then I will answer the other questions, let you know what's going on in the fair, the second half of the show. Stay tuned. Be right back and hear what our sponsors have to say. <music> 